Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? I would like to introduce you to the Vienna Secession. When I lead you through the doors into the following room, you will find that you've arrived in the year 1902. If you experience nausea, that's perfectly fine. Please remember we are travelling back 121 years in time. As a final reminder, viewer discretion is advised, for the artworks you are about to see are sensually sublime. Please follow me into the golden room. So we are now in Vienna, in the year 1902. Of course you and I are not yet born, and we are 12 years away from the First World War. Egon Schiele is just 12 years of age, Gustav Klimt is 40, and takes centre stage at the 14th Secession Exhibition inside the magnificent Mecca that is the Secession Building in Vienna. What is the Vienna Secession? Well, I'm glad you ask. Here is an answer from one of the founders, Hermann Barr. We want to declare war on sterile routine, on rigid Byzantinism, on all forms of bad taste. Our secession is not a fight of old artists against modern ones, but a fight for the advancement of artists against hawkers who call themselves artists and yet have a commercial interest in hindering the flowering of art. You see, 1897 is the year the story starts. The five main figures of the Vienna Session are Koloman Moser, Josef Maria Ulbrich, Josef Hoffmann, Hermann Barr and Gustav Klimt. It was one of the most important art movements the world has ever seen, conceived as a way for artists to break free from the conservative traditions of Viennese society. There was a war on art, which if you want to understand, I suggest reading Reflections of a Non-Political Man by Thomas Mann. Now, if you look over to the right-hand side, please, you will see Klimt's Beethoven Frieze. This is the eighth and final plate called Choir of Heavenly Angels and Embrace. The first thing about this work, I should say, is that Klimt never intended for it to remain. It was made solely for the 1902 exhibition and afterwards was meant to be extinguished. However, the following year Klimt had a major retrospective, which is a reason why in the end they kept it. Then Karl Reininghaus, Klimt's patron and collector, stepped in and played the role of Beethoven Free's protector. Klimt's masterpiece is a 34 metre meditation on Beethoven's Ninth Symphony through Richard Wagner's interpretation. I first encountered this work at the Lower Belvedere in Vienna in March earlier this year, with Beethoven's Ninth Symphony playing in my ear. Looking at this work is like looking at the sea, a spectrum of colours and unfathomably deep, glistening golds and soft bluey greens, damask reds and jasmine white cream. With raised hands and closed eyes, the choir of angels from paradise are the floating female figures framing this picture and correspond to the poem Ode to Joy by Friedrich Schiller. In the exhibition catalogue, Klimt's female choir is said to represent die Künste, the arts, and is characterised as follows. The arts lead us into the ideal kingdom, which is the only place we can find pure joy pure happiness, pure love and pure freedom. Joy, the purest spark divine, the kiss to all the world in time.